appreciate that amazing intro. How many of you in the last couple of months have turned on the news, scrolled through social media and thought, we're living in some pretty challenging times, politically, economically, socially, financially, emotionally. How many of you had that thought at some point? Pretty much everyone. And how many of you would like to know the three keys to powerful and lasting social change so we can turn this situation around by show hands? So we're at a crossroads today, a time of grave crisis. With war, terrorism, violence escalating in the world, we're heading towards a place of mass extinction within the next 100 years, unless we choose otherwise. We've got two choices ahead of us. One is that we can sit by as passive bystanders, blame other people, other situations, because our life has not been turning out the way that we planned it. Or we can walk the path of leadership. We can take responsibility for how we show up, for the hardships, for the challenges, and for that occasional crazy curveball that life throws at us. I believe that to create global peace, to create a world that we're really proud to live in, that we're proud to pass on to future generations, it's going to take millions of people around the world to make truth, justice, nonviolence part of our everyday life. It is going to take all of us here to make a decision to step up in our own lives and not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. My grandfather, his mentor Gandhi, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the expression here, he's very well known for saying, be the change that you want to see in this world. We've all heard this expression, we've seen the bumper stickers, they're quoted all over the internet. But what I'd like to share with you today is the day that I really learned this lesson. It was the day that gave birth to the three principles to lasting change that I'm also going to share with you today. And my hope is that by hearing them that you're going to be able to elevate the quality of your life, the quality of your relationships, and to really step into a higher caliber of leadership. So there I was. 16 years old, and I formally decided to become a Buddhist. I had been introduced to the practice by my mom's brother, and the values of peaceful living, social responsibility, global responsibility really resonated within me. The values that had been instilled in me by my grandfather from a very, very early age. And here I was, surrounded by like a large body of people, all of a sudden were speaking the same language as me. I was alive, and so I really stepped up within this organization, took more and more responsibility, I became a young women's leader, and as I became more and more active and committed to making a difference in the world, my relationship with my father became wrought with tension. He was more of a traditional Hindu, and he didn't understand my desire and my will to align myself with another faith. And the lack of understanding, fear tends to escalate. And somewhere in the back of his mind, he thought his daughter had joined a cult. And in my 60-year-old mind, I got pretty angry, pretty upset at him for not letting me live my life the way that I wanted to live it, for not letting me follow the path that I felt that I was destined to follow. Never mind that it was about creating some good in the world. And in my mind, I had a whole list of shoulds. He should be more understanding. He should be more compassionate. He should let me live my life the way that I want to live it, even if our viewpoints and our perspectives are different. I had this entire list of shoulds, all these judgments in my head, which only escalated to the point where one afternoon we had a pretty horrific argument, and I thought, I'm done. <coughs> I packed my bags, and I decided that's it. I'm moving out. Didn't know where I was going to go. I hadn't figured that out in my 16-year-old head. But I was very clear that I was ready to move. 
and as fate would have it, that evening I was due to attend a global peace conference. And so this vice president of this global organization had uh, delivered his keynote, and at the end he opened the floor to a QA. and a And I thought, this is it. I can get validation here for what I believe in. Because of course, when I share my story with him, he's going to say, well, if somebody doesn't let you live your life the way that you want to live it, if they don't let you follow your dreams and your path, then you have every right to not live there. You must move. And so inwardly, I was secretly gloating at getting a little bit of ammunition against my father that evening, should I need it. So I stood up in this room full of 500 people, and I shared the conflict that I was experiencing with my father. And this gentleman, this leader, embraced what I had to say. And he looked me in the eye, and he said, be a good daughter. <laughs> what? You mean I don't have to get angry at my father? You mean I don't have to convince him of my point of view? I don't need to make him wrong and I'm right. None of that. Be a good daughter. And in that moment, I realized that by dimming my father's light, I was rebelling and being the exact thing for which I stood against. I realized that I needed to take 100% responsibility for how I was showing up, for what was going on in my environment. And if things weren't working out the way that I designed it, it was because I was blocking it. And I learned three really important lessons that night. That lessons that night. The first lesson, be a role model. I realized that night that all I needed to do was to be a role model for my values, for what I stood for, for what I believed in. I stood for peace, for compassion. I needed every ounce of my being to be vibrating that energy. And in doing so, it would reassure my father the fears that he had would dissolve because he would realize I'm still the same person. Nothing's changed, and if anything, I'm a better human being for it. I realized in that moment that I only get to keep what I'm willing to give away. See, I wanted compassion, but I wasn't willing to be compassionate. I wanted understanding, but I wasn't willing to be understanding. And we're the same around the world. We want other people to bend to our point of view, but we're not willing to see the world with the lens with which they view it. And one question that I asked myself that night, and that I've asked myself every single day when I face a challenge or some kind of conflict in my world or in my environment, is how am I responsible for creating this? One question changed my life. The second powerful lesson that I learned that night was to be an expression of love. Gandhi said that to defeat your enemy, conquer him with love. You know, everything that we say, every action of ours, is an expression of love. And if it's not an expression of love, it's a calling out for love. It's a crying out for love. It's a crying out for connection. And my father was exactly the same. When love was missing, fear rose. But his words were really an expression of love. He didn't have the language to be able to articulate it in the way. And I imagine that if he did, he would say something like, Lena, I'm really worried. I'm concerned about your safety. I'm concerned that you're perhaps mixing with people that I don't know if they're looking out for your highest good. And I'm concerned for your safety and I want, to, I'm, I want to take care of you. I love you. He didn't have the words, so they expressed itself, it expressed itself as violence, as anger. It's not physical violence, but just blocking me and blocking my path. His words were also a calling out for love. A calling out for me to say, please give me a reassurance. Please let me know that you're okay. Please let me know that you've got this handle so I don't need to worry so I can rest back. And it's the same around the world. When there's conflict going on, it's because we're not seeing somebody's expression of love. We're not seeing that they're calling out to us for love. The third powerful lesson that I got that evening. Be at one with the opposition. 
See, I realized that I was very good at pointing out the wrongdoings of my father, but not so vigilant about pointing out my own. And we're the same as groups of people, as a nation. Very good at pointing out militarism and terrorism, and acts of violence in other people, other countries, other nations. Not so vigilant about pointing it out in our own. All our minds are joined or united in the thought that we're all separate. But the reality is that we're not separate, we're connected. And not only are we connected, we're extensions of each other, just vibrating at different frequencies. You can imagine that we're all part of this big ocean, this global ocean. And each of us are like individual waves, the waves that make up the ocean. And this wave is its own unique personality, its unique identity, quirks and nuances. But we're all part of this wave, we're all part of this ocean. Not just the people that we like, not just the people that agree with us, but every single person on this planet. And when we remember this, we affect change in a way that our mortal mind cannot comprehend. It is not helpful for us to look at people and groups of people and say, they're all bad. Just as it is immature to look at ourselves and say, hey, we're the good guys, we're good. When we act in that place of separation, it's game over before it's begun. When Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in this world, he's saying, and, and, what he's, and the question that he's asking is, how do we raise our level? So if this is how we envision the world, how do we raise our level to meet that place? So that we can step into our power. So if we want to change the world, if we want to move the needle, it's up to us to step up and to move it. It, it is up to each and every one of us to take 100% responsibility for how we're showing up. And I urge you all here to step up now as leaders of your family, your community, your business. And some of you I know are going to be moved to step up as global leaders. And we do this by shifting our perception, our minds, our hearts, raising our vibration, transforming our environment. And when we do that, we will create the change that we wish to see in this world. Thank you.